Hey, what's up everyone? Manesh here. I want to say welcome to The Psychedelic Scientist. This is a channel that provides discussions of the latest findings and developments in psychedelic science in an accessible but non-superficial form. I'm your host. I'm a neuroscience PhD student with ongoing research in the field of psychedelic neuroscience. In this video, I'm going to be drawing on some scientific research as well as some knowledge that's just floating around in psychedelic circles to give you some practical tips on how to best prepare for your psychedelic trip. Psychedelics are unique and fascinating compounds for a whole bunch of reasons, but one of them is that they're so unpredictable. The same person will never have the same experience twice, and two people can take the same dose in the same location and have radically different experiences. And this is related to something I've talked about in multiple videos now, and I'm sure you're probably aware of, is that psychedelics can really amplify what is already present. They don't necessarily take something that's external and put it in your experience, but they just amplify your sensitivity to what is going on for you, both internally with in your mind and your body and externally in terms of your sensitivity to your environment that you're in. And so it goes without saying, if you want to create the best conditions to have a positive psychedelic trip, you have to very consciously and deliberately make sure your internal experience and your external surroundings are conducive to what you want to experience. And in psychedelic circles, this is referred to as having good set and setting where set refers to our own internal experience and what we bring to the experience and setting corresponds to our external environment that we're in. So in what follows, I'm going to be diving deep into what set and setting really are in a bit more detail and also, more importantly, giving you some practical tips for each so you can best prepare for your next psychedelic trip. And before I continue, I have to say that I'm not advocating for the use of illegal substances. This video is purely for educational and harm reduction purposes and please follow whatever laws apply to you wherever you're located. Alright, first let's dive into set. So what is set? Set corresponds to all the things you bring to the experience as an individual. Things that we can include under set are our beliefs of what psychedelics can do, what they are, what kinds of experiences you can have, our current life concerns, our current emotional state, as well as our personal history and past experiences. Our intention, what is our motivation for this experience and what are we trying to get out of it? Also, what are our personality traits and our particular tendencies in the way that we think? All of these things and more collectively comprise set and have a huge influence on your experience. All right, next I'm gonna give you five quick tips of things you should take into account for your next psychedelic trip. So first is to surrender to the experience and have a strong intention. This is actually being specifically supported by a couple studies. And so something you might be thinking right now is that surrendering and having a strong intention might be kind of contradictory. Because if we're just surrendering to the experience, how can we bring something in our mind that we're trying to create in it to some degree? But the idea here is that we should have an intention in mind, that is have a clear idea of what we're trying to get out of this experience, which could be just to have a fun, good time, or it could be to have deep insight into your own personal patterns, it could be to connect to nature, or whatever you want it to be. But at the same time, you should be willing to surrender to the experience and allow this intention to take whatever form it happens to take. So we should not be attached to how this intention will manifest, but in contrast, be totally open and receptive to floating downstream wherever the stream is taking you. You definitely don't want to resist or fight the experience and try to swim back against the current or even grab onto the riverbanks to help you cling on to what is familiar and comfortable. And the second point is to let go of your current concerns. So actually the studies I just referenced, they found on the opposite side, the things that most predicted challenging experiences with a lot of anxiety and negative feelings is that people were excessively preoccupied with things going on in their life outside of that experience. And so definitely in preparing for your trip, you should try to clear your mind as much as possible. What I recommend for that is that you can go out, spend some time in nature before the trip, go on a hike, or you can do some yoga and try to clear your mind through that, or meditate or do some journaling or even in general just do anything that snaps you out of your usual headspace and is kind of like a pattern interrupt in your day. You don't want to be just going to work, getting home, doing a trip and then going to work the next day. You really need to make space for it. And number three, this one's pretty obvious, be mindful of how you feel. Studies have specifically looked at this and surprisingly if you're anxious or emotionally aroused in a negative way, that's very likely to be amplified during that experience. And so you wanna make sure, ideally, immediately prior to your trip, you wanna feel like you're in a calm, positive and open headspace, ready to dive into the unknowns that psychedelic experience can confront you with. And four, consider what influence your personality traits or mental dispositions might have on the experience. Specifically, for example, one study looked at how neurotic people were 
and found that people who were more neurotic, that is, had a constant tendency to worry and overanalyze, uh, were more likely to have a negative trip. Kind of makes sense, right? But I can say that this can also be countered against by what I said before about clearing your mind of current concerns. Another tendency that has been looked at in relation to a trip is one's tendency to be very logical and rational. One study found that the more rational and logical a person was, the more they just kept on trying to understand the experience, the less likely they were to have deeper feelings of oneness with the universe and what are called mystical type phenomena. So basically, if you're a hyper-rational person, something like me, you gotta really let go of that and allow yourself to have an experience that you probably won't be able to understand on a cognitive conceptual level. Another quick thing, a cool trait that scientists measure sometimes is called absorption. And this kind of corresponds to the degree that we become absorbed in our experiences. For example, if you're high on the straight, you're somebody who goes into nature and totally loses themselves in the sounds and sights and so on. Or you're somebody who really loses themselves at a music festival. And you're somebody with a really strong fantasy world and you often get sucked into that as well. If you're somebody who is like that, you're much more likely to be highly sensitive to psychedelics and be more likely to have mystical type experiences of oneness with the universe. And lastly, this is a very important one, you should be aware of your any history of mental health disorders in your family. This can include tendencies towards schizophrenia or bipolar disorder or mania or manic depressive disorders because often in a psychedelic trip, as I've said, it can amplify what's already present. So if there are symptoms there that are kind of subtle or that you might not even be aware of, they might be amplified and brought forth during this experience. That could be extremely scary and destabilizing and you definitely don't want that. All right, so that's it for set. So now let's go into setting. So what is our setting? It's just our physical, our social, and our cultural environment. And so in what follows, I'm just gonna dive into each of these categories of setting, giving you three quick tips for each. All right, let's first start with physical. So first, your physical environment should match your intention. So for example, if your intention is to have a kind of an insightful, introspective experience, then your physical environment should be something that's calm and that lends itself to going within. And two, make sure your physical environment is predictable. During a psychedelic trip, you're very sensitive to external influences. You really don't want something to suddenly take you off guard and knock you off your center during your trip because it can be hard to recover from that and can have a strong impact on your mental state. And three, your physical environment should ideally be aesthetically pleasing and warm and inviting. You don't want to be in an environment that puts a dampen on your mood and gives you weird vibes. It, sh it should be something that makes you feel comfortable and safe and positive. All right, so next is social. So first, you should be around people you trust. During a psychedelic experience, you're in a very vulnerable state and we often have impulses to act weird and do crazy things. So ideally, you want to be with a group of people who you trust and you shouldn't be scared that they're going to judge you if you want to do something. And two, very importantly, you should make sure the people around you want the best for you. You want to make sure that if you do go into a challenging headspace and start having a difficult time, are these people going to be there to support you and ground you and help you through that experience? And three, you shouldn't feel any pressure to socially engage or keep talking the whole time. In a psychedelic experience, inevitably, you're going to just want to be alone and be in your own headspace to ground yourself. And you kind of always want to have a safe space where you can kind of retract and be alone for a while if you want that. And next, cultural. This kind of spills over into set a bit, but I think these are important questions to ask. Firstly, you should be comfortable with the way that the experience is being structured. Is it being led by a shaman or a person who's guiding and structuring the experience? Do you like how that's being done? Does it make you comfortable? Also, if you're just with a group doing it casually, what is the implicit expectation on what you're going to be doing during the experience? And two, you should be try to become aware of any assumptions there are in terms of what is appropriate or normal during the experience. This also relates to making sure that other people have broadly similar intentions to you. For example, if you want to go deep into yourself and have insights and have a self-reflective journey, and then the types of things you're going to talk about and how you're going to express yourself might be different than somebody who just wants to have a good time and mess around. And third is you should take into account how your cultural context is influencing how you interpret your experience. So being in a culture means you're embedded within a set of beliefs, practices, and frameworks. And so you should be aware about how these are influencing your trip because often these can become a self-fulfilling prophecy. You should try to uncover these assumptions as much as possible and not cling on them too tightly. This is something the famous psychedelic bard Terence McKenna always said when he would always say culture is not your friend. And by that he kind of meant you have to let go of the assumptions and the way your culture implicitly constrains your experience and gives you a sense of what is possible and tells you how you should interpret things. All right, so that's it. So to summarize, so for set, 
You gotta be willing to surrender to the experience and have a strong intention. You have to be able to let go of your current concerns and issues. You should be mindful of your current emotional state and make sure it's positive, calm, and open. You should be aware of what you're bringing to the experience in terms of your personality and mental dispositions and kind of counter against them whenever needed. And lastly, you should be really careful and look into whether your family has a history of mental health disorders. And if they do, I would really avoid trying psychedelics altogether. Or in extreme cases, when you really feel like you need it, trying to contact some kind of mental health professional and ask them about it. And for setting, you gotta take into a broad variety of things in terms of your physical, social, and cultural environment. Because all of these will combine to influence your experience in a strong way. Especially at higher doses, you really, really, really need to take into account set and setting as I've described. The horror stories you hear of people going to these crazy negative experiences are usually because they've done it in a reckless way, not taking set or setting into account. Even the most experienced psychonaut approaches these substances with humility and respect because you never know what kind of experience you can be getting yourself into. And with that, I hope this is all very helpful for you. Please leave a comment below if you have any questions about what I've spoken about or if there's anything I didn't cover. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button for videos from me on the latest in psychedelic science, both from an informative perspective, but also from a practical perspective. And with that, I hope to see you soon.